Are you struggling with B-Block or finding those insane melodic ideas? Don't worry, I got you. Today, I'm sharing my three-step proven formula that always helps me break my B-Block and start cooking up again. For those who don't know me yet, my name is Vision XE. I've already worked with some of the biggest artists and names in the industry, including Q Beats on Roddy Rich's Ghetto Superstar. I'm a ghetto superstar like I'm ODB. I'm ODB. My closet clean. Stick around because at the end of the video, I'm gonna break down this sample I made with them. Trust me, you don't want to miss this, but before we get there, let's start with step number one. Focus on the rhythm. If you can't come up with any melodies because you have beat block or you just aren't feeling it, you have no ideas, this is what you should do first. When you're making a melody, often it's like, it's like this. You just start, da, 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 or maybe you start with the chords, you know, and you always start the same way. What I'm gonna show you today is a different approach to this. And it's gonna be just focusing on the rhythm first and then adding the pitch later. So the first step would be finding rhythm that you like. You can even try triplets or something. Okay, so now we have a pretty simple rhythm. Now we can start playing with the pitch. Just focus on one note at a time and just try out different pitches for the different notes. Okay, we're just gonna duplicate this now. Now we have our main motive and now we can actually start building upon that. I'm gonna make this whole sample using step one, just focus, focusing on rhythm. But now we have step two, which is go big. This basically means that right now we are in a piano and we're gonna make a huge MIDI in here. And then we're gonna use this MIDI for step three, but more on that later. So let's go and turn this into a huge MIDI. I'm gonna start with obviously a bass line, maybe one deeper. Or even layer this if you want to. Actually, instead of this, I kind of want to layer this right here. So we might do something like this. That's nice, but we definitely got to turn that down. Something like this. We can obviously still turn this into chords. So now we have our main melody and uh, we have a bass line. Now I want to add something repetitive. Maybe the rhythm. Wait, maybe actually like this. I kind of like this actually. And now we're gonna turn this into something repetitive. Okay, and now we kind of wanna add accents maybe. Maybe even a little bit too much because at the end we're gonna subtract down. Right now we're just looking for ideas. Okay. Yeah. Let's go maybe up as a fill or something at the end. Okay, something like this maybe. And now let's add maybe something right here. As you can see, it's always just rhythm and then just keep expanding on the idea. At some point, I'm gonna leave it like this. The next step would be duplicating it and adding variation. So right now we're gonna add variation. I'm gonna add variation right here by deleting stuff first and then adding something at the end. First of all, I'm gonna take this out and this out. And I'm gonna add right here something. Maybe right here. Well, I kind of like this, kind of like a question and answer. And maybe we can even duplicate that. Okay, as you can see, we have a pretty big MIDI right now. It's a lot going on. But if we break it down, we actually didn't do crazy stuff. We just went step by step. Rhythm first, pitch next, and then just focus on small elements within the sample or within the MIDI. Stick around until the end because I have a crazy surprise for you guys that will instantly break your beat block just like this. You definitely don't want to miss that. So the next step is where the magic happens. It's step three, split and layer. Split and layer basically means we're going to take this MIDI, going to use a lot of sample channels, and we're going to break that MIDI 
down into a lot of small pieces so it's not like that big you know and once we did that we're gonna find sounds for all these little patterns and then we can go in and make it more fancy in the midi add some effects and stuff like that but now first we're gonna break this down so i'm gonna clone this over a couple times it's gonna mute the piano and then we're gonna go in and delete stuff so right here let's first up delete everything but the baseline so now we have a baseline sound kind of like these right here these little riffs you know so i'm gonna delete everything except that then i have a shortcut for selecting invert selection oh damn that's a good shortcut for this actually so now we can delete all that and we have everything right here next up we want to delete out what we already used so we did this we did this so this is what's left we clone it over real quick so we know for the future so this midi is like split down into six patterns now we're going to look for sounds for that. Which what I like to do is use uh, one shots because they're just very quick and easy to use. We could also go for VSTs or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Right here, we also have a lot of free samples and free like, one shots if you're looking for sounds. The thing I'm going to use is Fantasy Synth Sample Pack. Let's just look for bass first. And we're not going to perfect every sound right now because we're just looking to like get the sound palette right and then we can tweak and fix everything up. So now we have this bass. Maybe even this. Let's look for this one right here. Like I said, we're just getting a sound pad right right now. It's not gonna sound crazy right now, but it will at the end. Okay, this obviously sounds like ass right now, but now we're gonna go in and treat all of them right, you know? And the reason why we made a huge ass MIDI is so that we can actually take stuff out, you know? Because it's gonna be a lot once we add effects and we start flipping stuff. It's like a marble statue. We're gonna slide, like, we're gonna have a huge ass block of notes and we're gonna carve away all the stuff that we don't need. So now I go up and I'm gonna lay this. I'm gonna use the chorus just to get a little bit more white, some texture. Next, we have this lead sound right here. I'm definitely gonna use illusion for that. Because I want it to be like very delayed. And now we're just gonna go in and add the next sound. Show me my players. I might actually use a different sound though. Actually delete this. Okay. I'm gonna use some memory on this one. Okay, so this is our block of marble now, and now we're gonna carve out of that. So now I'm gonna bounce all, all these out, and I'm gonna take pieces from here, pieces from there, to create something nice. Let's make this unique. Okay, I kinda like this already. I want to pitch it even more. Okay, duplicate this. Let's emphasize like the hit on the first piece. And okay, maybe pitch it down here. Oh yeah. I kind of like this. Okay, as you can see, like, we're starting to find, like, a rough shape. So, at this point, we could call it day, you know? We could actually just bounce it out again as, like, a sample and, you know, structure it as a sample and then use it for a beat. Alternatively, if you're not happy with your result yet, then you can just, again, go back to the drawing board, pull this pattern down and start adding new midis to it, you know? And then bounce them again. Like, as an example, I think a dark piano would sound, would sound pretty good here. Back to the, our first idea of the baseline. And then we could go in and play like a repetitive dark pattern. And then we can go maybe down something, or maybe up.
And then we can obviously go in, split the pattern, and now we can start arranging, you know? So something like this, maybe like this. We can make this pattern unique now and go in and delete the top line. Now we can also clone this again, make it unique again and delete out the baseline. This is how you can come up with endless ideas of samples because at the end of the day, you're not trying to make like a perfect melody or like you're trying to finish the MIDI, you know? You're just trying to build a block of marble and then at the end, you're going to start going in and chopping stuff off, turning stuff into like reversing stuff, like growth speeding stuff. And that is pretty much my proven formula to always get a melody out, even if I beat block, even if I'm not feeling like it, I have no particular idea or something. This method always works. Step one is always focus on the rhythm. Step two, make a huge MIDI. And step three is split a layer. After those three steps, you can really literally do anything. So let's break down the sample uh, that I made with QBs. The first thing I did is going to be a little bit convoluted because I make samples pretty messy, but it started out with three trends. And my process at the time was pretty random. I just picked the random sounds and played like multiple patterns within a pattern basically. And then I just bounced it out and used to chop it a lot. So right here we have this sound right here, which is a quarter. Next we have this sound right here, which is a choir apparently. And lastly we have this sound right here. A pretty harsh lead. Together I sound like this. Super ass, but that's okay. Because I just took those, bounced them out into this right here. And then I put that track into Slicer, into Fruity Slicer right here, as you can see. And then I pitched it down by five semitones and created a pattern just like this one. We basically didn't add any effects. The only thing I did is I ran it through my bus. Back then I used a lot of like cassette buses for samples and it was basically just an Echo Boy, Reels, Fruity Balance and EQ. Just to give it a little bit more character, warmth and at the end the EQ to add a little bit back of that higher end because we lose that through the Echo Boy and Reels. So the next step I did is I bounced out the slicer and got this audio file which I pitched up an octave and I stretched it and then we get this And I used that to build a sample around it. So I added this pad right here with these chords right here. Pretty simple. It's just a 5-1 chord progression. And then I added some passing chords right here. It's the power string preset. And it sounds like this. Very lush chords. Like digital strings. The bass is the saucy bass. It's one of my bass I used to make like this. And then I played in a lead. The preset is the Pro 5 to oscillator unison. Sounds like this. If you're wondering, there are like no effects on here except like an EQ. And the bass is an EQ and on the Fafusian is a chorus and some EQs. So they're basically raw sounds, you know? And lastly, we added this X band. This X band is, if I'm not mistaken, the default preset. No, it's bigger legato strings, also like digital strings and just some supportive chords to make the whole thing bigger once it like kind of builds, you know? This is already it. After that, I sent it out to Qubits and they added like a lot of like different instrumentation here, like uh, bells. They added the synth right here, or multiple synths right here. They added more strings right here. And as you can see, the sample goes on for a long time. So there are like five different elements that Qubits added. I think they swapped the bass as well. Yeah, they add the piano note, swap the bass, and just put their sauce on it and really tie it together. Because this right here, also like my part of the sample, sounds good, but it's like not fully there yet. And they just took it to the next level. And yeah, that is pretty much the breakdown. Um, as you can see, a little recap. 
I basically only used EQs, one reverb, two, three Junos. I used the Shaper Box right here, which is just halftime uh, deja vu. So that's the breakdown and that's the end of the video. If you watched until now, I want to thank you. And I have a little gift for you in the description. It's a free MIDI kit that you can use. It's royalty free MIDIs in there. You can use those to break your beat block and get some quick inspiration by just dragging some MIDIs in. I hope you liked the video. I hope you could take something away. And that's it for me. Peace out.